Hello and welcome to Pokemon Horizons, episode 63 of you. And this one's really nice as we're on to Liko's last test, up against Grusha. And after getting the typical sort of gym test fun we've had with these episodes, this like the only thing that needs to be mentioned is how Florigato saved them from crashing into the tree of her yo-yo. I still enjoyed seeing them play around on Munchus as Oddle. As I return to the top of a mountain, we get Grusha's backstory about how crashing while snowboarding made him more harsh on himself and others. It's not really anything we didn't know from the games, but getting it in the show is always nice. Plus we do get the addition of Sotodo being responsible, but he caught it after he felt bad. We get to the actual battle where Grusha leaves us to Titan against Liko and makes the Titan feel like a Titan. It's tanky and powerful and really presents a big obstacle for Liko, as the Titan fights against Florigato of ease and completely dwarves it, leading to Liko prioritising agility and a great little show of strategy. It's really fun to think how she's grown as a trainer. Florigato has to be withdrawn, leading to Hatch from coming out, and after finally getting confirmation in her psychic move is confusion, holding back some Ice Spinners and launching him back, Hatchum gets overpowered by a liquidation Ice Spinner combo. Again, the Titan feels so powerful as it roars down and the shadow completely covers Hatchum. And the way Liko thinks about how to overcome the Titan's bulk is pretty outstanding, as she realises its exterior may be guarded, but the Titan's mouth isn't, as with precision, Florigato is able to launch a magical leaf into the Titan's mouth. And while she doesn't defeat it, it makes Rusha recall it and bring out his Ace Altaria. The aerial bit makes it harder for Florigato to hit it, and puts Liko in a position where she has to dodge or fight back against the Moonblast Bam. And where I had mentioned Florigato saving with a yo-yo earlier, that comes up here as she's able to grapple Altaria and smack it down with acrobatics. It's a really cool little sequence and highlights what makes Florigato interesting to watch in battle. Liko terrestrializes and Grisha responds in kind, gliding magical leaf and ice beam, which Florigato loses out on. That's a cool looking struggle, the battle is lost. So Roy and Dot do try to cheer her up, because you know, she could still part, so might be given a rematch, but Grusha's having none of it. It's very funny how they're saying she gave it her all, how she thought could matter more than winning, and Grusha walks out like, nah fam, you're lost. There's no do-overs in a serious battle, you failed your test. He does not want to hear anything about having another chance. It's a whole element about it's harsh on others, and that's where we leave off. It's definitely a bit of a shock, and this now puts Liko as the only one who's unqualified to rationalize, but it's very fitting for Grusha's character and opens up with interesting possibilities for the story. I'm very interested to see unfold. Liko didn't even fight poorly or anything, and while she didn't win because of what a power deficit there was, she doesn't get an out. As for Grusha himself, why is he the funniest character ever? He's been beefing with this kid for no reason and was talking crap the whole fight. Bro had me laughing when he was saying stuff like, know your place, or talking about power difference. It's nice to have this whole different attitude for one of the gym leaders here. He doesn't feel as supportive as the others, and levies his strongest gym leader position really well. And in general, what a cool battle it was. So Titan Altaria felt like very different threats in very different ways, and seeing Grusha have these different ways of battling tells you all you need to know about his skill and talent. Florigato did really well despite the type of disadvantage using its own strengths to fight in a way only it could, which leads to a hatch room. This has been consistent with all the tests about the secondary Pokemon for our leads haven't really done much anything, and it's no different here. And again, that's just like quite disappointing, because... Look, I love the starters, but come on. <laughs> like, they've had these, like, secondary Pokemon for ages now, and they haven't, like, been getting... like, been given any big wins yet. So, you know, that is quite disappointing. But unlike Killer Watchroo, I felt like I expected a bit more, since we had not seen any training for hatch room at all, really. I really enjoyed Liko's determination here though. She speaks confidently about battle, setting some strong energy up against Grusha, knowing the odds are incredibly against her, not letting herself be deterred, having a good idea about what she needs to do to try and overcome those differences, and implementing a lot of strategy into her battle style. I think it's so reductive to look at this match and think, oh, Liko lost and failed, none of this matters. Her growth from early on in this series has been remarkable, and I'm so excited to see where the next chapter of her story goes.